Here, I've got an idea. Two blocks of wood and a hammer. There. Now it's a part. Ooh. Yeah, there's our case housing. Here's all the internal working action here. What's his problem? Yeah, there's metal chunks in this. It's a thrust bearing. Let's see, that's our little swash plate. That's what gets the pistons to rock up and down. See how that works? Turn the shaft. Swash plate moves up and down, runs each, each individual piston, and then they are valved from this little back plate over here. And these are the valves, one-way valves. Air can flow through, but they can't go back the other way. And down inside, look at that, there's chunks of metal in there. But this thing was disintegrating. That's all the noise we heard. Metal pieces, there's one. There's another piece, another piece. Oh yeah, they're everywhere. Okay. Hello viewers, good day to you. Welcome back. Uh, forgive me, I'm a little bit winded. We're exhausted. I, I just pushed a PT Cruiser out of its parking hole and then behind that we had a Subaru which we pushed out uphill and over here into the stall so we can pull the motor. Uh, I'm gonna try to fix that, uh, that broken bolt with the engine out of it. Um, and if not, then I'll still have to go back with the original plan of getting a replacement engine. If you recall from a video long ago, we snapped off a bolt down in the front of the block in the water pump and I cannot get the thing out. But I really don't have a lot of space here, so we're gonna try to pull this unit out of here and then make an attempt to extract that bolt. But that's not what this video is about. I'm just kind of giving a, a little bit of an update on that Rubisu over there. We, uh, we're returning over here to the O2 Firebird with the 3.8. I've got some AC parts that were delivered and uh, we're gonna go ahead and proceed with the uh, installation of said parts and we're gonna get the system charged and we're gonna make sure that it cools and does not produce loud, clanky, racketing, compressor destroying noises. If you do not know what I'm talking about, that means that you missed yesterday's video where uh, we dissected and autopsied an exploded AC compressing unit. Uh, this is the unit that came out of the car. Uh, it did have a core charge on it, folks in the comments were asking. But um, the core was 10 bucks, so I figured uh, the $10 was well worth the lesson learned for how this uh, compressor is manufactured and constructed. Anyway, if you want to see that video, or if you missed that video, or would like to refresh yourself, or you only saw half of it, just go down to the link in this video's description, or wait until the end and you'll see a, a link at the end screen, or check the pinned comment in the comment section, and those links will take you back in time to the part one of our Firebird. All that being said, let's get back to it. I want to get this thing reassembled and running it today. All right, so I think I want to start by reinstalling the compressor. I went in there with some compressed air and blew out all the leaves and contaminants in the radiator. I said compressor, I meant condenser. I want to get the condenser installed first. So let's get the caps disconnected. These are the, uh... come here, little plug. Pow, that's how you know it's good. So we have pressure. This is a good sealed, known, awesome unit. And I was able to uh, locate a replacement. That was cool. Yeah, we'll pop these guys out. I think I need to transfer that stud over here into the new unit, and then we'll be ready to slip this thing down uh, into its brackets. I'm gonna need an e-torch here to pull that stud out. Unpackage. There we go. Transfer this thing right on over to the new one. Screw it in and then we can drop this thing down into its home there. Let's see here. There we go. All right, condenser is moving in. We just need to set this thing down in front of the radiator onto the little tabs that are on either side of the unit. Slip it in and then we can get this radiator back in the upright position and uh, reconnect it to the uh, support. All right, let's check our slots against the tabs here. We can see that one's lined up in the tab, the one at the bottom. Let's check these other two. That one's good. And the bottom one, I barely can see it. That one also is falling into position here. So let's just uh, seat this thing all the way. I think that's good. And then we need to get this plastic piece attached to those little push pins down there. So let's move this radiator back in its position. It's got two pegs with two grommets in it that hold the bottom of the radiator into the bottom of the core support. So we'll get those lined up, hinge the thing forward, and then get the plastic back on. Let's 
see here. There we go, supports in, let's hinge it forward. And I've got to reach down and push this plastic bit uh, into position here. It's gonna be kind of tough. Let's use, uh, let's use the pry bar tool here to push those pins in. Let's see, they're lined up. Let's give it a push. Oh, very good, that side's in. And the other side, let's see here, move you guys over. I know you guys can't see what I'm doing down here. I'm trying. There we go. Okay, now I need to get that top panel to hold this radiator back so it does not all fall apart and become unconnected again. There we go. Let's get this guy up here. It's also the air filter housing. One component, multiple purposes. Put that in. There we go. Nice. Okay, bolts coming in. Let's get this thing fastened. Get that one in there. This one on this side. There. Now it's all secure and stable like. Hmm. Wrong socket. I'm good at that. Wow, wrong socket twice. I can't read. Why won't it read? Or they're not in order in the tray. There we go. It's two of them. Numero tres. Four. Good. Here, there's some dirt stuff on here. Let me blow that off real quick. Goodbye, sand. Good. All right, moving in a little closer here. Let's go ahead and get our compressor down in its position. We'll just nuzzle that right on into its bracket there. I've already got the, uh, the rear bracket transferred onto the new compressor. Let's just slide that guy right on in. Easier kind of said than done. The thing's awkwardly heavy and I have to reach down to get it in there. Ooh. Cable in the way. Hang on here. Come here, cable. Oh man, I can't reach. There we go. Woo, that's in. Kinda. Oh. Let me redo my footing here. Right about like that, I think. Gipper, all right. Let's get some of the fasteners in. We'll run them down and I've got to go out back behind this compressor and get uh, that back bracket installed. There we go. Is that the right bolt? That one seemed kind of long. I hope it was. I think it was. I guess we'll find out in a minute, won't we? And of course the one down there on the bottom. Let's get that guy started. All right. Okay, let's thread these down some. Almost all the way. I need it to be able to move some so I can uh, get that 15 mil in the back. That was too far. That's exactly what I did not want to do. There we go. And that one on the bottom. There, we found it. Okay. Now, we need to grab this one here. That's that 15 bracket bolt that goes way down in the back, kind of behind the manifold. There we go. No, you guys can't really see in there. It's, it's in the depths. Okay, got it threaded. That one has started. So now, switch this out with a 15 and get that back one tight and then we'll torque these front ones. Socket switch. Coming in. Let's get way down in there. You see it in there? It's, it's way down there. Yeah. A little tighter, a little bit more torque. 
There we go. Good. Okay, let's torque these front bolts real quick. That was good. That one hit you guys with a socket ratchet. Next. Beautiful. And you know what, while we're here, let's just plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. All right, next up, we're gonna get the manifold rooted around the compressor and then bolted on. Uh, forgive me, this is a kind of a long parts assembly here, and if uh, I smack you guys in the face with the hose, I, I didn't do it on purpose. But it's it's like right next to uh, next to you guys' face, so it's something we gotta deal with here. Uh, see, yeah, it's, it's all in the way. See, here. gonna slip this manifold. These AC lines behind the uh, compressor and under the exhaust manifold here. Hang on. Come on, now get in there. I'm almost. It almost pulled off the uh, the gaskets. Squeezing that thing back there. Let's see. I, I can't see where the holes are. You gotta feel it. All right. I think I got them. Yeah, yeah, there it is, okay. And I need my bolt. Ooh, this is hard to do. This thing wants to move everywhere. Okay, reaching in there. And everywhere I go, I'm in the way of your view. This is not okay. Here I know. I'll get the bolt in the manifold block and then I'll try to uh, try to line it up. That might work. I think. Hmm. Lost it again. I lost my orientations. Got it. There's my orientation. Oh, this is hard. Okay, the bolt threading in. It's starting to line up here. Come on now. Keep going. Okay, I've got a couple threads in it. Let me get my little ratcheting wrench and we'll tighten that guy down. All right, going back in there, ratcheting miniature wrench. I'm just gonna reach around and get a hold of that bolt and work that in until it's tight. And then we'll go in with a longer wrench and apply final torque. That's just so I can get some speed out of this and work in the limited space that's back there. I could probably do this from the bottom, maybe a little easier. But this is how I took it out, so that's just how I'm gonna put it back together. Okay, those threads have bottomed out almost. Let me apply a little bit more torque and I'm leaning on you guys' heads. Oh, there we go. All right, that's kind of tightish. Let me recover my tool. I'm trying to do that without dropping it. Contorting. Oh, come on, come off of there, there you go. Got it. Whew. Okay, let's put actual torque on uh, on that fastener. Let's get this guy lined up here. I don't need much, just uh, 20 pounds or so. One more push. Yeah, click. There we go. Got it. And I don't want to forget that spark plug wire. And we'll have a misfire, and that's not okay. Plug that guy in. Okay, we're done in this section right here. Okay, so I've moved down, and I'm on one of the hoses going to the bottom of the condenser. Uh, you can see it's a very far reach down there, and I'm like laying on the radiator support, trying to finger thread that fastener uh, onto the condenser. Um, I can't show you guys what's going on down there because there's there's really nothing to see because my hand is buried under a cooling package but I've got yeah it's on there okay Ugh. I got the line on there now I just need to put a little bit of torque on that nut is this the right one 13 that's the 15 okay that's the wrong one let's try the 13 Whew. yeah that was that was pretty deep let me go grab a uh, another tool here 
All right, going back in with the long reach swivel headed extension with the 13 on it. Trying to reach that, uh, that nut that's way back there. I can't even put my fingers on it barely. Like I can, I can reach it with my fingertip and that is all. Let's get that thing. I need to get the socket on the nut. Oh, and I lost, I can't find the nut. Okay, I've got the tool on that nut down there. Now I just need to get my electric ratchet on the extension and I think it fell off. Ah, yeah it did. Okay, trying again. Yeah, it's one of those situations where I need to put the tool on the fastener and then put the other tool on the first tool so I can reach the fastener. Ah. Meanwhile, there's like a hood latch stabbing into my ribs. One of those situations. There we go. That hose, I can see it. That guy's on. All right, a little bit more torque on that 13 and we're good. Oh, buddy. It's hot in here, I need to come out. All right, break time. Woo. All right, here, let's uh, go ahead and get our idler pulley installed back on its bracket right here. We'll get that guy bolted in. We'll throw the belt on and get some of the hard lines reinstalled next. There we go. Little tighter, I say. There we go, perfect. All right, let's get our belt fed down into its home. Let's see, or dropping. Oh, I'll just drop it down there, that works too. Yeah. So I'm gonna start with the crank. I don't remember the way this goes, but I'm pretty sure I can figure it out. We'll start with the crank. Water pump smooth, so we'll go around that. And over to the power steering. It's falling off. I've only got one hand because I'm leaning over again. The other arm is supporting my weight. Okay, we're gonna come up and over the nader down around the compressor there we go around that idler and then the tensioner how'd this work on the tensioner let's find out i think it goes back that way let's see since the tensioner tensions that way that tells me that the belt has to go over like right there, I think, is that it? I might have to pull the diagram. I actually really did forget. Let's try this first. Hang on, we'll put it that way. And then I'll untension it. Uh, the other way, please. Yeah. I think this is it. It is now, haha. There we go, yeah, we got it. Awesome, Beautimus. Okay, let me retrieve my wrench here. We'll do a quick groove check. Looks like the AC grooves are good. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Power steering crank and the nader. Okay, belt's on, that's good to go. Awesome. All right, we're in the home stretch. Let's get this hard line in. That one's gonna go from the evaporator down here to the top of the condenser. Just slip that guy in, bolt her on. Right there. Good. Two bolts, and then we can get uh, we can get the receiver dryer installed. To pull this guy into a vacuum. There's one of them. I need to find the bolt that goes there. Okay, bolt coming in. Get that thing started. And yes, I have new seals and gaskets on uh, on all these components here. We've got the. 13. There we go. And let's plug in our high side switch. Get that guy connected right there. And now let's go ahead and unbox the receiver dryer and get that thing bolted in. Okay. Get this guy opened up. I hope it's the right one. Parts for these older cars can be kind of difficult to obtain. And this receiver dryer is sort of specific. It has a uh, built-in hose. Oh, come here, hose. There 
go. Yep, that's got the low side uh, service valve on it, and then there's the hose. Yeah, not always something that folks are going to have lying around. And some more gaskets, those can go back in my box. I already put new ones on it. Well, not on this, I put them on that and on that over there. Well, you know what I meant. You know what I meant. I hope you did. Anyway, let's get this, uh, let's get this thing set up right here. Ah, the hose is plugged in. We've got the 13 mil bolt. And then this hose is gonna plug in right there. One more bolt. So this uh, receiver dryer has a metal band and that's what uh, secures it. We'll just tighten down that bolt that's on it. Tighten that band down, that's gonna mount that thing in place. And then simultaneously, we'll get that bolt in for the line. There we go. Yeah, see, I do have two hands. Look. Yeah, I'm showing off. Actually, no, I'm not showing off. It's for efficiency, and that's what it is. I'm being efficient. Hey. Fix. All right, receiver dryer's in. The band is coming tight. That thing's in place. Let's go ahead and fire up the AC machine and vacuum this system down. All right, let's fire the machine up, powering on. We'll get our hoses on there. And while this thing is warming up, I can uh, get that air intake and everything reinstalled. So let's get this guy plugged in. Begin becoming plugged. There you go. I changed the valve in that earlier, by the way yesterday after I flushed it all out. This one has a new valve in it, so I don't need to replace that one. Hey, get on there. It popped off. We don't want that. Get on there. There we go. Okay. Put this guy into a vacuum. Begin vacuuming. Please. Let's get my goodies out of here. for the air filter Put that in nice new filter coming back in there we go and then air box is going to plug in right here a couple snaps click snap click got to line up that boot I need to I need to loosen that clamp some too. Do not save service record. Vacuuming. Screwdriver. Pull that guy out some. This thing slid out without having to remove that clamp. It's like a kind of soft. The material's not that uh, robust feeling. It feels squishy. Like neoprene maybe. Let's tighten that down and ah that's not working it wasn't slipped on all the way it's angles of this thing are weird i think this is like a like an aftermarket or a replacement boot yeah it doesn't feel like it's original this was kind of pointed down some and the bottom was pulling out no worries i got it let's screw this guy in some then we can get that temp sensor plugged in. Should be in good shape here. There. All right, let's just get this intake temp sensor plugged in with some clickage and tight, tight. Clipped on, tight, 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 tight. Good, good. Tools, let's get that out of here. All right, as soon as that thing's done vacuuming, we can install the charge, uh, 1.5 pounds if memory serves. Then we can fire the system back up and uh, watch it make cold air. I hope, fingers crossed. I think it's going to work. It's a brand new system, of course it's going to work. I don't think the evaporator's clogged. I believe, oh, oh, I just messed up major. Hang on, hang on, hang on, I completely forgot. I did not put a new orifice inside of uh, that tube right there. That's, that's an oversight. That would have made me have to uh, recover the system all over again. Hang on, pausing, vacuuming. I got to get a new orifice for this thing. I knew there was something, like something was bugging me here. I knew it. I knew there was something I forgot. 
Yeah, without that orifice, we can't go from the high pressure liquid to the low pressure gas, and we will not be able to make cold. It will not make anything cool if uh, without that orifice in there. There's nothing to meter the flow of the refrigerant. Here, set that aside. Let me go fetch a new orifice from the box. All right, I got one. I had one in my box there. Uh, spec says that the OE orifice is the uh, red color. Uh, the color indicates the diameter of the uh, orifice inside of the assembly. So there's uh, there's black ones and white ones and yeah, I think uh, maroon ones. Get in there, tube. Press that all the way down. There we go. Now we can get this guy back in. I'll use the evaporator to push it in the rest of the way. There we are. And I did lube those uh, O-rings, so no worries. Okay. Let's get the bolt back in. Tighten down and then I can re-vacuum this. Sorry, can't see. Clicks. Okay, now it's got an orifice. The system will definitely work. It will not cool without that tube in there. Won't do it. Not possible. Not gonna happen. Continuing vacuum. Actually, I need to start over. I was almost done. Yeah, it's only got three minutes left. Stopping, restarting, blah, blah, blah. Vacuum again. Love my job so much. Do it twice. Two times. Dos. That's why. Okay. All right, I'll be right back when this thing's done. Don't go anywhere. Okay, vacuum test complete. We are holding a vacuum, meaning there's no abnormally large leaks. Uh, the vacuum test will not find small leaks, but it will find big leaks. Like, let's say I've got a gasket on this thing that uh, didn't seal or I forgot to put one in. The leak down test will find that, but it will not find uh, itty bitty microscopic leaks. Like let's say uh, evaporator's leaking or there's a pinhole in something, it won't find those. But we have no leaks, so that is of no matter. Begin charging now, uh, not a POE system. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, do not save again. And I think 1.5 pounds is what we're looking for. So zero, one, five, zero pounds, charging on the high side. There we go. Charge is going in. By the way, I did add the necessary amount of oil. There was three ounces in the compressor, but there was no oil in the condenser, no oil in the evaporator, and no oil in the lines because we flushed it out. So I did add some oil uh, with my oil injection device earlier. Ooh, charge in progress. We're looking good. Charging. This thing sure is taking its sweet time. Okay. Sweet. It is done. Let's hose compensate it. That's going to add the amount of refrigerant that is uh, calculated to be contained within the hoses, which is like 0.32 pounds. So while that's doing that, let's reach on in here. But restocking the engine. And system's already on. Let's go witness that compressor fire up. Ooh, look at that. Compressor's running. See the clutch turning? No noise. This thing is super quiet. I feel cold. I feel more cold over here. Excellent. Let's go fetch a thermal meter and check the, the vent temps. Let's see what we've got there. Let's see. Where's my thermal meters? Uh oh. Have I lost them all? Hmm. Na -na 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 -na. I found one. We're good. Let's check our pressures here. 250. 38, that's so 38's okay, I can live with that. Especially on a 90 something degree day. Yeah, it's 90 degrees inside. It was 97 earlier today. 90, and not inside, it was 97 out there. That was a hot one. And it tends to be a little hotter feeling in here because there's less airflow. Yeah, let's turn that all the way down. All right, let's give this guy a minute. Windows up, all the way up. Come on, other window, get up there. All right, I'm gonna hop out, close this door, let this thing uh, settle up. We'll get the machine disconnected, and then we'll come back and check those temperatures. Show, still looking good. Okay, let's 
just connect our hoses, get this stuff out of the way. Ooh, nice condensation. Making cold now. And there is some dye in that oil that I put in there. Uh, I don't understand why folks think that dye will clog an AC system. I see that in the comments all the time. Um, no, it won't. They put dye, the UV reactive dye, they put that stuff in there a lot of times from the factory. So I don't understand why an oil slash dye mixture uh, would, uh, would clog the system. Um, there are some dye packages that have like a stop leak in them. Those are not okay. Don't use anything with stop leak. Stop leak is not good. That's a band-aid and it will often cause a larger problem uh, than the one you're trying to solve. So don't use stop leak with the dye. Perhaps that is where the uh, misconception comes from. Let's get our caps back on. High side cap and low side cap. All right, we've got a we've got a nice, cool, cold, operating, functioning, quiet, not rattling AC system. Success. All right, coming back in, let's check our center vent temperature. Let's see what we've got. It's been about 10, 15 minutes, and look at that. 42 degrees on the Fahrenheit scale. How about that? Beautiful, that's nice and super cold. I like it. Good to go. Operation success. I'm gonna get this thing out of the building. I'm gonna hose it off real quick. Get all the uh, residual dirts and sweat drippings and all that good stuff out of here. And this project is complete. So, that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out right now. And I will do that as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, let me know about that in the comment section down below. Do not forget that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of Firebird, end of AC, end of exploded, grenaded, destroyed compressor, end of video, end of transmission. Nice and shiny. Get all my fingerprints out of here. Good. Beautiful. See you guys later.